Well, here we are, Monday, the 10th of April, 2023, and we're hopefully just a few days, maybe a week or so, from the inaugural launch of the Starship. And as you can see right behind me, it's almost ready to go. The crews are doing the final preparations before hopefully in the next day or so, the final wet dress rehearsal where they will go through all of the emotions, all of the systems, all of the countdown just until they would light the engines to make sure that everything is ready to go. So it's quite exciting. And I'm able to come out here the day before that wet dress rehearsal, which is great. So we get a chance to see all of the final preparations and how the site looked before we get to that orbital test uh, flight. Now, for those that know, this is the Starship stacked fully behind me on that launch tower and the orbital uh, launch uh, ring that uh, supports the Starship. And it's a two-part vehicle. The top is the Starship itself. It, you can see it with the black tiles. This is the part that would carry cargo and eventually people and will go to orbit and do its mission. Below that, you see that large stainless steel booster and its responsibility is to get the Starship off the launch pad and to propel it to a point where the Starship it can separate and then itself get to orbit. So it's really great to be able to be here in person to see this in person. It's really hard to tell the scale unless you're here, but this uh, vehicle is almost 400 feet tall or about 120 to 130 meters tall and the tower is even taller than that. So just to put that into perspective. So anyway, uh, I hope that you enjoy these quick views from the beach looking towards the orbital test facility and the orbital launch facility on this day before hopefully the final preparations for the launch are underway. Now one of the things that I didn't realize when I first came down to Starbase, and you may not as well, is just how close the orbital launch facility is to the Gulf of Mexico and the beaches here. As you can see right behind me, it's a beautiful day. The waves coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, the beach here, uh, which is a public beach as I mentioned, and it's open most of the time unless they're doing some sort of uh, Starship testing. But as I turn the camera around, you can see some of the sand dunes, some of the vegetation behind me, and right here is the orbital launch facility. You can see Starship fully stacked, getting ready for its wet dress rehearsal, and hopefully very soon the first orbital test launch. I moved a little bit closer to the beach to give you a little bit different perspective of where we are in relation to the Starship and the orbital launch facility behind me. Now as I turn the camera around this direction, directly behind me, about a mile is the border between the United States and Mexico. And uh, just uh, here you can see the Gulf of Mexico, the surf coming in and uh, how this uh, appears. And uh, again, just a beautiful beach, really close, probably the closest beach in the world to a operational orbital test facility with the largest rocket ever attempted to be launched. So we're a little bit closer to the orbital launch facility and we give you a good view of some of the closer end details that are going on as they prepare for the wet dress rehearsal and also hopefully soon the first launch. Now as you can see with the tower at the base, they've really done a lot of work to clean up this area. They've removed a lot of the scaffolding that was there for the work to prepare the orbital launch table for 
the test flight. They've also removed quite a bit of the equipment around the base of this that would be necessary because of the uh, rocket exhaust and they want to have as minimal amount of things that can be flying away as possible. You can also see behind me here, this is the tank farm and it's where they have many of the commodities that are used for the propellant. They use some liquid nitrogen, they use liquid oxygen, and then behind this area they have the liquid methane that is used for the Starship. Now on the base, right around in this area here, you can see that they've erected some of these temporary barriers. Now these are containers that are reinforced with a steel mesh and then they put dirt and rocks and other gravel mix in there and these are designed to help protect part of the tank farm. A little further away from here it's kind of out of view but they've also installed some permanent concrete barriers and it's designed to protect and deflect the exhaust uh, uh, coming off of the rocket away from and over the tank farm. And another thing I just want to show you is just how close this tank farm is to the orbital launch site. It's remarkably close, but uh, I trust that they have a good idea of how this is all going to work and the installation should be fine and we should get a very good initial test, hopefully, is very soon. Another thing I wanted to show you, again, near the orbital launch site, is what the area right near this looks like. And as I pan around behind me, you can see just how flat and really nothing in this part of the site. And it's kind of interesting that you can walk right out here and you can get this close to the Starship just before it's ready to launch for the very first time. I've moved a little bit closer to the main entrance to the orbital launch facility. You can see the Starship behind me is in the final preparations before the wet dress rehearsal, which hopefully will be happening tomorrow or maybe on Wednesday, the 11th or the 12th of April. And hopefully that goes well. If that goes well and we get the FAA launch license, perhaps next week we might see a launch. Now here you can see the main guard shack. This is gate D2. This is where most of the materials enter and exit from this portion of the launch facility. And they're also doing a final preparations on the tower, the quick disconnect, and other of the um, parts that are necessary for the future launch. And it uh, looks like it's getting pretty close. A lot of activity to clean things up around this area. So I think that bodes well, hopefully, for that wet dress rehearsal coming up tomorrow. Well, here's another very interesting, iconic part of Starbase, the ever-present and the immortal Starhopper. Now, this was the first test vehicle that they used with a Raptor engine and actually flew. And it flew in July 2019. And interestingly enough, I was actually about five miles over this direction at South Padre Island with my family, and I didn't even realize at the time that they were going to be launching uh, Starhopper, but they in fact did, and uh, uh, little did I realize that I was seeing something that uh, in the future would start bringing me back to this area and the interest that this uh, launch site has for so many people around the world. This portion of the launch facility is the suborbital location. You can see the suborbital tanks behind me, and of course farther in the distance you can see the tall tower with the Starship at the orbital launch facility. And this has been the site for the last several years where we saw the development, the test launches of the Starship, and it has all 
allowed the development to the point where we can see the orbital launch test hopefully very soon. Now a couple of things that you can see here on this day, Monday the 10th, is the large crane has been brought down to the ground and this is part of the preparation for not only the wet dress rehearsal but also hopefully for the orbital test launch coming up very soon. I've already mentioned the suborbital launch test and the tank farm and also right behind me here you can see the Starhopper and again that was the first test vehicle that actually flew with one of the early Raptor engines that are used now with further development in the new Starship. One other thing that I want to kind of highlight here that mostly gets overlooked is there's a sign here and it says historical marker. Some people think that that may have to do with the Starship operations here, but it actually doesn't. What it has to do with is back in the mid 1800s, there was a railroad here using a floating bridge and it was connecting several large areas around here in a very early day. And as you've seen with some of the, the terrain in this area, it was very difficult to imagine them building that back in the 1850s. But as you can see here, there's a nice historical marker for all of the people that made that happen. And uh, it definitely predates Starship by about 150 or 160 years. Now, what I'm wondering is if sometime in the future we'll see another historical marker added here due to the operations of Starbase and the initial tests and hopefully the successful orbital flight test of Starship. Well, that brings us to the end of this first installment of what I hope to be many over the next several days leading up to hopefully a launch of Starship. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.